Kostryska. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest uh, speakers and lecturers. Uh, Dr. Paola Basile is Associate Professor and Director of Italian Studies at Lake Erie College. She's a native of Rome and earned a doctor degree with honors from l'Università degli Studi di Roma, La Sapienza, in Modern Languages and Literature. She has a PhD in Comparative Literature from the University of Montreal and an MA in French Studies from McGill University in Montreal, Canada. She also taught at the University of Montreal, at Concordia University, and at the Italian Cultural Institute of Montreal in Canada. She was the Vice President of the Canadian Society of Italian Studies and is currently the book review editor for Quaderni d'Italianistica, the official journal of this society. She is also a member of the American Association of Italian Studies, of the Modern Language Association, and of the Italian American Cultural Foundation, for which she coordinates the essay selection process every year. Dr. Basile has authored two books, I Folli Voli di Ulisse and Battito Dali, and has published several articles in Italian, English, and French in comparative literature, travel literature, Dante Italian cinema, contemporary Italian literature, and culture. She has also translated two books from French and from English into Italian, as well as several articles. She is accompanied today by Sandro Bonaiuto, who is an internationally acclaimed sculptor born in Cleveland of Ohio parents. He studied in Rome, Bologna, Faenza, and Carrara. He was commissioned by the city of Faenza to create a larger-than-life holy family, now in the collection of Pope John II in the Vatican. Sandro works in public and private collections in Europe and America. His is the beautiful statue of Dante that will grace this garden starting uh, the, uh, the spring of uh, 12. So please make sure to join us for that inauguration. And now it's my pleasure to call Paola and Sandra here to the podium for the readings and commentary of uh, Dante. Benvenuti a tutti, parlerò un inglese, però leggerò in italiano e lui leggerà in inglese. I would like to start with giving, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I will start to give you a little, just a brief introduction of Inferno, because I'm going to start to read the first canto of Inferno and also my favorite one, the 26th canto of Inferno, also known as the canto of Ulysses. Now, what is Inferno? Hell, obviously. Inferno is a place where unrepentant sinners dwell. It consists of nine concentric circles inside the earth. So if you wonder where is Inferno, it's just under your feet. It starts with Jerusalem. And it's smaller than the previous one. The geography of Inferno is a moral geography, as well as a physical one, reflecting the nature of the sin. This is the law of contrapasso, the punishment that fits the crime. Unrepentant sinners are punished in a way that somehow reflects what they did wrong on earth while they were living. Sometimes the contrapasso is extremely similar in nature, but sometimes it is the opposite, a sort of mirror image. The nature of the scene is made clear by Dante, who by the way is also the protagonist of the Divine Comedy, he is a pilgrim, is the traveler, uh, and is made clear also by his encounters with the sinners. Inferno is divided in three major categories of moral failures, or if you prefer, sins. Incontinence, violence, and fraud, also translated in English as malice. To many scholars, these divisions are inversion of the classical virtues, which are moderation, strength, and in Italian is prudenza, but has been translated in English as caution or even wisdom. And the inversion of the classical virtue of moderation is, of course, incontinence. Subjecting, subjecting reason to desire, the inversion of strength or courage, if you prefer, turns out to be violence. And the inversion of wisdom, the virtue of intellect, turns out to be fraud, which is also a perversion of intellect, malice, if you prefer. 
uh, it's very difficult to translate Dante, so I'll give you different translations. Now, there is also a fourth classical virtue that comes from the ancient times, pre-Christian time, and it is justice. And Dante is very much concerned about justice. The whole Divine Comedy is about justice. And it is also reflected in Inferno with the unjust city of hell. Now, Dante's journey through hell under the guidance of Virgil takes, you know, uh, takes him more deeply into the realm of evil. The deeper Dante's journey is, the more serious the sin he encounters. What Dante is concerned about is not what we would think is a criminal justice system. A lot of my students ask, oh, this is a sort of a criminal justice system, and they compare it to nowadays. Well, it's not really just about it. Dante had something else in his mind. Dante asked a fundamental question, which is all over the Divine Comedy. What does it mean to be human? What is a human being? What defines us humans? And that's the question. That's an ethical question here. And one answer goes back far before Dante is human have intellect, the faculty of knowing, and will, the faculty of choosing. As we're going to see the sinners toward the top of the hell of Inferno, are going to be those who essentially ignore the, those specific, specifically human qualities. And the further we go down, the more we're going to see the conscious perversion of the human faculties of intellect and of will. Uh, the sinner Dante's myths are from many times and places. Some are great figures from history, literature, or myth, mythology, as Francesca stated before. Some are local figures who would have faded into oblivion, except for Dante dealing of them, remembering them. For example, the famous Paolo and Francesca, that I believe everybody knows. Uh, thus, Dante combines the universal and the local, the mythical and the historical, imagination and the reality. Dante doesn't make a distinction between real people and fictional people. Fiction is another way to explore reality. It is a reflection on reality and probably the royal way to get to the truth, as many other writers and poets have stated before. Uh, the sinners have in common a desire to justify themselves and to put the blame for their actions elsewhere. They're very much self-centered. It's all about themselves. They always blame someone else. They're always the victims. It's never, they don't ne never take their responsibility. And they all lack self-knowledge and they have lost the good of intellect, as Virgil tells the Piglin Dante. So sinners, Dante tells us, in a way, are people who see the tree in front of them, but, but don't see anything at all of the forest, and as we are all connected with each other.